situated between the Firth of Tay and the Firth of Forth, at 1325 kilometers squared and a population of 365,000, lies the Kingdom of Fife. This Scotty dog shaped region on the east coast of Scotland holds great historical links to the Pictish times where it was originally known as Fib. Fife is famous for being the home of golf, its rich cultural history and lays home to one of Scotland's best long distance walk known as the Fife Coastal Path. Well hello my fellow explorers, my name is Lloydie and welcome to The Adventures, where here you will find all things travel, history, adventure and food. So if that sounds like something that you could be interested in, then please consider smashing that subscribe button because in honesty, you have no idea how far it goes into making these videos possible. And well, you're in for a real treat because we've teamed up with the guys at Welcome to Five to hopefully bring you one incredible series following their 117 mile long distance coastal walk over eight days. Yes guys, 117 miles in eight days in a quest to learn a little bit more about the county I now call home and hopefully find myself copious amounts of tea. Well I guess there really is only one thing for it. Let's head to our start location and start what incredible adventure. So the start of this trail begins right here at King Carden Bridge where you're met with this incredibly impressive archway behind me that signifies the first few steps that we are about to take in this incredible 117 mile long distance coastal walk and after months and months of planning this is probably the first time I've ever actually felt really daunted at the task ahead but here goes our first few steps into this 117 mile epic masterpiece and we've made it through without falling over let's do this guys buckle up because you're in for one epic adventure the Kincardine Bridge was constructed between 1932 and 1936 to a design by Sir Alexander Gibb and architect Donald Watson it was the first road crossing of the River Forth downstream of Stirling, completed nearly 30 years before the Forth Road Bridge, which stands 15 miles to the southeast. The bridge was constructed with a swinging central section, which remained in use until 1988, that would allow larger ships to sail upstream to the small port of Alloa. Throughout the months of planning and bringing this epic trail to video format, Welcome to Fife have been absolutely incredible from start to finish. With regards to how we go about bringing this content to life in video format and kind of who we include to enrich the content we have and make this well, a very successful tour for everyone involved. And they've included a fair few organizations to help us along the way. And one of them being the Fife Coast and Countryside Trust, who pretty much manage the Fife Coastal Walk. And they have a really good written guide on their website, which displays it kind of from start to finish in written form. And with discussions with them, the idea for this tour is to basically follow their written guide in the eight sections that they recommend and bring it to all you guys in video form and show us what's around. So we're currently on stage one. That takes us from Kincardine Bridge to Lime Kilns. This is a fair walk on our first day, about 23 kilometers. We've literally walked under the bridge and now we're walking through the countryside on our way to Kuris, which is our first big stop with tons of Scottish history behind it and a really beautiful place and quite a lot of you may recognise from well a really popular series 
on Amazon Prime. Well, the start of this walk has been really pleasant and the weather conditions are just perfect for walking, which can sometimes be quite rare for Scotland. Definitely, you have to prepare for the unexpected. So it's been really good. We're currently walking through the countryside now. There is a road that runs up the side of me, but I'm lucky if one car has passed me, which is making for some of the perfect peaceful start to the walk. We've got some friends next to me in a couple of coups to keep us company along this walk. It's just, it's just perfect. And I'm really enjoying this and what's to come. Well, we are now about a mile away from our first big destination on this tour, the village of Curis. However, before you make it there, you get to this incredible place behind me known as the Tory Bay Nature Reserve. Now, the nature reserve itself holds an international status for wintering and wading bird life. And the lagoons behind me are actually artificially made by ash from the local power plant at Laganat. Now the reserve itself is part of a much larger tidal mudflats that runs from the point at Laganat to the point at Crombie Bay. Right now it's absolutely full of bird life and it's blocked off by the railway behind me here, which means it's very untouched and it's just such a special little viewpoint. The wall continues from the nature reserve into Curis, a formal royal borough and parish on the coastal path. It's considered the most complete example of a borough of the 17th and 18th centuries. Curis originally served as a port city on the Firth of Forth and is believed to have been founded by Saint Surf during the 6th century. It's a quaint little village recently made famous by the series Outlander with its white hulled houses and red tiled roofs and steep cobbled streets which run from the market cross to the hilltop abbey. In the centre is an ochre coloured palace where we're heading to meet Fiona who is going to give us a little tour. The palace dates back to 1597. It was built by a man called George Bruce. Uh, George Bruce was the third son of Edward Bruce, quite a wealthy landowner in the area. But as a young man, being the third son, he had to go and make his way in the world by himself. So George Bruce travelled abroad, mostly in Germany, and he learnt a lot about mining and engineering. And he took his knowledge back to Curis in about 1575, he reopened all the mines in this area and the palace is built really on the fortunes of coal mining. The mining, as I say, started way back in the 1200s, the 12th century. It was the monks in the abbey that originally mined for coal. But when George Bruce came and opened the mines in 1575, it really took off. But it was okay if you were a wealthy person here, but if you were a poor miner, you had a really tough life. You worked 12 hours a day, six days a week, men, women and children. Um, you did get a Sunday off, but you had to go to church and you had to spend all day listening to very long sermons by the local minister. And if you didn't go to church and you tried to escape, a man called a searcher would come out looking for you and be dragged down to the front of the church and made an example of. So being a miner was not a very nice occupation back then. But saying that, George Bruce was a good employer. He didn't allow very young children to go down the mine and he also gave the miners half their wages and he kept, kept half back. He was like an unofficial bank. So if you're a miner and you break your pick or your shovel, you can go to George Bruce and he'll give you some money to, to replace it. So by all accounts, for his day, he was a pretty good employer. There's about 14 furnace rooms. We take you from the 1600s right up to the end of the 1700s. They'll, you know, they'll be able to read about the people who lived here uh, they'll be able to see beautiful painted ceilings. Some of our ceilings were painted back in the 1600s and although they faded, it's amazing just how much detail is still there. Well, this place is absolutely incredible. And from the outside looking in, you don't really get a grasp of the vastness 
and how big that in actually is. It seems to go from room to room full of amazing old features. It kind of amazes me to think that this thing has stood the test of time and been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. I'm so glad I stopped to have a look around. It's been just incredible. In addition, we're standing in the beautiful herb garden. Our garden is terraced, so even if people um, don't necessarily want to know about the house and its history, a lot of visitors just come and enjoy the garden. Well, the palace itself is just stunning and so rich in its history. But the gardens are just something else. They're so full of vegetation and wildlife, from birds to bees to my hatred wasps. But they're all here just filling this one incredible garden. We've got pears, there's apples, there's blackberry. It's just an incredibly kind of tranquil place to walk around. Charm of the bells. I've absolutely loved it so much. Hopefully got a great experience. Myself and my colleagues are really passionate about this place. We love telling the stories and we also love to hear people's experiences and people sometimes do have strange experiences in the palace and I think it all adds to the story. Well, I just want to say a huge thank you to Fiona for giving us that guided tour of Curis Palace. It was absolutely awesome. And Curis itself really is a true gem of Scotland and Fife that everybody should visit. And the place where we found well, our first warm cup of tea. Now on this first leg of this journey, there are very few amenities on the way. So it is very important that you grab well, a cup of tea and a bite to eat where you can. And Curis is the first place. And Lime Kilns, our final destination, is our last place. So it is something to bear in mind. However, tea's almost finished and I've still got a hell of a spot to go before we finish. Well, we are well over halfway now on our walk towards Lion Kilns. I'm showing I've got six miles left and around two and a half hours of walking. It still feels like a fairly long way to go. Now, stage one loosely follows the coastline here in Fife where possible. There are a few sections that are literally unable to get to, or maybe it just extends the walk just that little bit too far. So you end up in places like we are now in the Tory Bay Meadows, which is kind of this awesome little bit of woodland area, which is so beautiful and peaceful to walk through and does make the walk really varied, which is really, really fun. I think I am feeling a tad naive to the task we have in hand though. Day one of eight, halfway through the walk. And well, although it's easy underfoot, the amount of gear on my back is making it quite a tough little challenge. And I think, well, maybe it's time I had a little bit of a rest and a pit stop myself. And well, I just soaked in the atmosphere and the enjoyment of this incredible walk. So we have been well and truly taken away from the coastline now and brought into a port village known as Tory Burns, which does make for a very interesting and varied walk going from coastline to woodland meadows to the little villages and showing me parts of Fife that even I haven't seen, which is really fun and really interesting. The town itself consists of a couple of shops, a primary school, and a whole load of houses. But it is a great variation to the walk that we're taking today.
So we are back walking across the coastline and as someone that has always loved the sea, just watching the waves rolling in right there is so peaceful. We've got some beautiful scenery around as well and the wildlife is just spectacular. This has been a really, really fun day of walking. I do feel like we need to get a little bit of a hoof on to really it's kind of nearly four o'clock and I'm still a fair way from the finish line. I mean, that's mainly due to filming rather than the ability to walk. But yeah, it's been so much fun. Well, we have been taken off of the coastline once again. We were brought up through a little bit of woodland to now into some farmland. We've got some hay bales around me and it looks really kind of golden. Again, the walk today has been really easy underfoot. It's nowhere near as challenging as the high peaks of some of the Monroes that I've climbed in the past, but it is obviously long distance and definitely requires kind of a bit of a endurance to kind of muster through the full days worth of walking ready for another full day tomorrow but i mean the skies are blue the fields are golden what more could you ask for But it's kind of funny. I knew that this section was coming and I knew I wouldn't overly be a fan of it. And now, well, I'm on it. I'm certainly not a fan. At this stage, you have to come off the coast and it brings yourself onto, well, a road of very fast moving traffic into Cumbri, which, well, isn't overly that fun to walk on. And I'm gonna kind of get a shift on and walk across it as fast as I can. It's only roughly maybe a mile long, but certainly not a part of the walk you want to be hanging around on for long. I believe it's the only one throughout the eight sections. So that's a bit of a saving grace. I'm just gonna kind of get a move on and hoof off before, well, that big lorry comes past me there. Well, I'm definitely glad to be back off that main road right now and on to terra firma, on the home straight towards Lime Kilns. I'm probably around 20, 25 minutes away from our final destination. And to say I'm buzzing is kind of an understatement. I'm definitely feeling the effects of today's walk on the shoulder and on the feet. And well, our light is getting a tad dark right now. So we need to get a shift on and find a place to hunker down for the night and will reflect on today's epicness of day one walking. Before hitting Lime Kilns, you pass through Charlestown, a village that was established in 1756 by Charles Bruce, the fifth Earl of Elgin. The planned village is laid out in the shape of the letters C and E for Charles Elgin. It was established as a harbour town for the shipment of coal and production of lime.
Well, we've made it to our final destination of life. Bagged ourselves the whole 11 miles from today's adventure and my second warm cup of tea. Just perfect and I've absolutely loved today from start to finish. But there is still one thing left to do for today. And that's find ourselves one incredible place to spend the night. Unlike the neighbouring village of Charlestown, Lime Kilns is an old settlement dating back to the 14th century. In the early days, Lime Kilns was mainly a fishing village with a large natural harbour sheltered by the rocky ridge known as the Gots. The importance of the local limestone became clear quite early in the village's history, being used as fertiliser and in the manufacture of mortar. Kilns used to convert lime to quick lime grew up, resulting in the products being exported from the port all along the east coast of Scotland. Today, the only tangible legacy of this industry is in the name Lime Kilns, as in the 1750s the lime industry was transferred to Charlestown. Now a sleepy coastal village, this makes for the perfect end stop and a place to rest your feet and grab a bite to eat. The tent here proved to be a little bit more difficult than I had hoped. The wind on this exposed part is unbelievable and it wanted to be more of a kite than a tent. But with some brute force and ignorance and a whole load of tent pegs, we've managed to get it down and stable. And hopefully it's not going to blow me over the edge in the night. <clears throat> but I wanted this spot mainly for that 270 degree view in front of me. That is just spectacular. I mean, over there you've got the fourth bridges as the sun is going down over it. It looks so stunning. And then back there you can see Lime Kilns and beyond to the King Carden Bridge where this whole adventure began today. And well, I actually cannot believe that day one is over. We've clocked the 11 miles, which well means there's still 106 miles to go. But I cannot believe that we're here and we've started this adventure and day one has now been finished and I'm probably just going to sit here and enjoy this view for a little bit and then get well hopefully a great night's sleep because tomorrow we take on day two which I believe is probably one of the most difficult sections definitely at the longest at 17 miles and well I was running a little bit short for time today so I'm definitely going to set an alarm super early probably at 5 a.m and well smash this adventure well thank you for watching as always none of these adventures would be possible without your support so please consider leaving some comments smashing that like button of course smashing that subscribe button because it does really help in keeping these videos alive and well i've been Lloydie, and hopefully this has been one hell of an adventure